Age of Radio. You are listening to Texas History Lessons, a slow walk through Texas history made in Texas by a Texan for everyone, everywhere. Welcome to Texas History Lessons. I'm Michael. And in this episode, we're going to have a little bit of fun. While doing some research, I recently came across some curious and interesting advertisements in the Texas Almanac for 1861. And I thought they would be worth sharing. They also led me to consider how people dealt with ailments in the past, especially in the 19th century. It's not necessarily something I'm that familiar with you know there were of course doctors practicing in early texas history and in the state of texas anson jones the last president of texas had come to texas to practice and find success before he got sidetracked into politics now one of the most common forms of treatment long while back is one that today might sound crazy but it is something that you have no doubt heard of bloodletting If you suffered from fevers associated with infectious disease, you might be treated in this way. Now, not everyone would want to undergo this treatment, and some just couldn't afford a doctor. What do you do then? Do what we've always done. Turn to home remedies and folk medicine. Green gourd tea acted as an emetic, which I didn't really know the term, it means a medicine or other substance that causes vomiting. Nice. Willow bark pills acted as a cathartic. A cathartic is an agent that causes catharsis. What does that mean? You're more familiar with it being called a laxative. Cathartics were taken to relieve constipation. Medicinal teas were also a common treatment and could be made from many substances, watermelon, catnip, sage, sassafras, butterfly weed, and corn shucks. Yes, corn shucks were all used as ingredients in medicinal teas. Early Texas folk medicine relied on whatever was available at hand to treat illnesses. Soda, coal oil, kerosene, sugar, whiskey, vinegar, Turpentine, they were all common household items used for home remedies. Soot from wood stoves supplemented the supply of medicinal drugs like perigoric, which was a camphorated tincture of opium that acted as an antidiarrheal. People really had a need for these things. Sulfur, alum, Epsom salt, and camphor Now, here's another one that I'm not that familiar with. I'll try to pronounce it correctly. Asafoetida was used for the treatment of different diseases, such as whooping cough, asthma, ulcers, epilepsy, stomach ache, flatulence, bronchitis, intestinal parasites, and served as an antispasmodic and helped with treating weak digestion and influenza. People also relied on medicinal plants like mullein, pennyroyal, remember the song, pennyroyal tea from Nirvana, anise, oregano, whorehound, senna, sassafras again, and other native roots, barks, and leaves. Now, in order to relieve the aggravation caused by insect bites, a pesky mosquito gets you, ant bite, all kinds of different stings, people would apply mud plasters. That would help alleviate the problem that occurs when you get bit. You get a bad case of sunburn, just apply some vinegar on it. People also drew on old world methods from their deep past to treat problems. Sympathetic or contagious magic. They didn't necessarily call it magic, but it was just a way they had learned. But that's what we call it. Sympathetic or or contagious magic, was used to transfer illness to another person, to animals, to plants, or even to just an object. 
let's say you have a crick in your neck. You wake up in the morning, just can't get rid of it. It's painful. You know how annoying that is. Can't turn your head just right. Well, what do you do? You rub your neck on the spot where a hog had rubbed its neck. You would then transfer the pain either into that spot or to the hog. I'm not an expert on this. It's just very interesting to know that that's an option, I guess. Next time you wake up and you can't turn your head the right way. Now, if you had a wart that you needed to get rid of, what do you do? You would rub it with a slice of potato or a stolen dish rag. And this is very important. Get a potato, slice it, or steal a dish rag. And then you bury the object after you rub it on the wart. And over time, it was believed as the rag or a slice of potato rotted, the wart would go away. You could get rid of asthma. And this one doesn't seem that nice. You could get rid of asthma by keeping a Mexican hairless chihuahua dog in the house. Now, your asthma over time would get better. But unfortunately, it would be transferred to the dog. But what if you get bit by a rattlesnake? No problem. What you would do then is go kill a chicken. People ate lots of chickens in the past. It was a common thing. My grandmother used to tell me about having to do it. That's why she didn't eat chicken, because she had to kill so many growing up. So you'd go kill a chicken and wrap its still warm body around the bite. And that would allegedly draw the poison. Now, people also relied on magical words, formula, incantations, and amulets. And, you know, that you say, that sounds crazy. Well, we kind of do some of this stuff today, don't we? You'll see. These were all part of folk medicine. Saying, sty, sty, leave my eye, catch the first one passing by, was believed to help remove a sty. And if that didn't work, you could also rub a sty with a gold wedding band to help relieve the aggravation. Now, this next one is one I said probably sounds familiar because people still use it and others are marketing it to make money as a cure. Copper bracelets were believed and are believed to help cure such things as rheumatism. Now, what do you do if you're having a problem with nosebleeds, recurring nosebleeds. You know how awful that can be. Well, what you do is you get a lead fishing sinker and tie it to a string and wear it around your neck. And that would help alleviate the nosebleeds. Some believed that the seventh son of the seventh son had the power to cure warts, stop bleeding, relieve the pain of burns and treat a lot of other maladies. Folk healers like this were also known to help by saying a secret verse or by reading a passage from the Bible while rubbing an afflicted spot where the pain or problem was. Another source of medical help came from the products I found marketed in the Texas Almanac of 1861. Now see, by the 1860s, Texas citizens and people all across America were drinking gallons of proprietary medicines. By then, physicians had mostly abandoned bloodletting and instead offered other proven remedies. The one thing you'll see here is, while we're used to seeing ads for different treatments and medicines, there's always a long list of possible, really horrific sometimes, side effects. That's not the case here. And please, don't take anything I've shared here as actual thing you should try to do. This is just look back at what people used to do. Go see a doctor if you've got a problem. And especially if you get bit by a rattlesnake, leave the chicken alone, head to the doctor, emergency room immediately. Now, there were a variety of these remedies. Lots of them. And here are a few that I came across. Now, on page 14, E.B. Wheelock and Company of 41 Magazine Street in New Orleans, or Nolens, as some of you might say, offered the aromatic essence of Jamaica ginger. Now, this was prepared only by E.B. Wheelock and Company. No one else offered this, it says. 
and it was, quote, an elaborately prepared treatment from carefully selected articles of the best quality. It possesses, in a concentrated form, all the valuable properties of the Jamaica ginger and is warranted to be free from all irritating or other properties of an injurious tendency. It is beneficially used in a variety of circumstances where a warm cordial and grateful stimulant is required, particularly in cases where there is a sense of exhaustion arising from excessive fatigue or heat. A few drops in half a tumbler of water with a little sugar will be found an effectual and most pleasant restorative. The primary effects of this valuable preparation are experienced in its gentle stimulative influence in the stomach, and from thence diffusing itself through the whole system. It is excellent in all nervous and hypochondriacal affections, some of the most evident of which are an oppression or sense of weight and flatulency, succeeded by nervous headache, giddiness, etc. These it removes by acting on the stomach as a gentle stimulus, diffusing a mild and cordial warmth, gradually exhilarating the nerves and giving tone to the digestive organs. It is also useful in chronic rheumatism, lumbago, etc., as an external application to the part affected. When applied externally, it should be mixed with an equal quantity of brandy or spirits. In flatulency or want of tone in the stomach, Half a teaspoonful may be taken twice or three times a day before meals in sugar and water. And when the stomach feels oppressed after eating or distended by flatulency, about 20 or 30 drops of the essence in a wine glass of water or wine invigorates and assists digestion. It is excellent in seasickness in restoring the tone of the stomach as a carminative in ordinary diarrhea incipient cholera, in short, in all cases of prostration of the digestive functions, whether from indulgence or disease, it is of inestimable value. In the summer months and in southern climates, it is invaluable, particularly during the prevalence of epidemic cholera. No traveler or family should be without it. Moving on to the next medicine offered for sale on page 16 eb wheelock and company were back offering their balsamic expectorant the ad reads this invaluable medicine is daily affecting the most wonderful and rapid cures that have ever been known all who have used it for colds coughs, influenza hoarseness croup bronchitis asthma pains in the side and every other disease of the lungs and breast attest to its great usefulness. A slight nauseant principle is designedly introduced into the composition of this expectorant for a number of reasons, one of which is that it causes mucus or matter to be readily detached from the inside of the bronchial or wind tubes, to which the mucus often adheres almost with the tenacity of glue, Secondly, it mitigates the pain and induces sleep, removes constriction of the bronchial tubes and spasms of the muscles of the chest. Thereby, it arrests the progress of fever and inflammation. This expectorant has been used by Dr. Browning in private practice for more than 12 years, in which time it has accomplished many remarkable cures and no doubt saved hundreds of lives. It was not the design of Dr. Browning to extend its sale beyond the limits of his own immediate practice. But witnessing the astonishing effect it had upon the system and the easy manner in which it subdued the most inveterate cases, saving almost every patient that had despaired of help, and by the desire of his friends as well as in answer to the calls of humanity upon him, he consented to place it within the reach of all, making this provision that its composition should at all times be free 
to any of the medical faculty who might apply for it. The proprietors have the satisfaction of knowing that hundreds of cures have already been perfected by its use and that diseases which have heretofore progressed and gradually terminated the lives of thousands for the want of a suitable remedy to check their progress now readily yield to the virtues of this modern medicine. So surprising are its effects on those who have labored under pulmonary diseases of various forms, and when all hope for relief had vanished, that it is universally hailed as a benefactor to mankind. Everyone should be impressed with the necessity of attending in time to a slight cold, from the neglect of which how many thousands have been hurried into an early grave by that enemy of the human race, consumption, who by taking the proper remedy at the proper time might have lived a long and happy life. Certificates and full directions accompany each bottle. Be sure and ask for Dr. Browning's balsamic expectorant. I tried to find some information about this Dr. Browning and was unable to in the short time that I, I took to do it. If you know anything about it, be sure to contact me and I'll share it in the future. Next up is the celebrated Argyle Bitters. Now here's the sale pitch for this. The increasing sale of these justly celebrated bitters speaks volumes in their favor. During the past 12 months, over 50,000 bottles have been sold, and this demand has been created entirely by the true merit of their healing and strength-restoring virtues, adapted as they are to the wants of our southern country, being manufactured from the best material after a recipe approved of by some of the most celebrated physicians of New Orleans to whom the proprietors are under many obligations for some valuable suggestions in regard to their preparation. It must then be apparent to any reflecting mind that these invaluable bidders should meet the requirements of this climate more effectually than those concocted in a different latitude, every portion of our country having diseases peculiar to its own geographical position. The Argyle bitters will strengthen and invigorate the entire system and effectually cure dyspepsia, liver complaint, nervous debility, disordered stomach, disgust for food, heartburn, loss of appetite, general debility, and prostration of the system. They are entirely vegetable and free from all injurious ingredients. They are pleasant in taste and mild in their effects, keeping the bowels gently acted upon and removing all impurities from the stomach. Persons advanced in life and feeling the hand of time weighing heavily upon them with all its attendant ills will find in the use of these agreeable aromatic bitters an elixir that will instill new life into their veins, restore in a measure of the energy and ardor of more youthful days, build up their shrunken forms, and give health and happiness to their remaining years. It is a well-established fact that fully one-half of the female portion of our population are seldom in the enjoyment of good health, or to use their own expression, never feel well, they are languid, devoid of all energy, extremely nervous, and have no appetite. To this class of invalids, these bitters are especially recommended. Their peculiar tonic and invigorating properties render them invaluable in such cases. Persons visiting districts harassed annually with fever and ague, or any fever of a bilious nature, will find that by the timely use of one or two bottles, they will not in one instance take the disease, as the bitters will renovate and strengthen the system and carry off the bile in its natural channel. I feel like a snake oil salesman that you see in the movies. Now, what would this magical cure cost you that would cause relief to all of these issues? For one dollar, you could get a quart bottle of this stuff. 
And, according to the ad, druggists and dealers offered it in every town throughout the state of Texas. Page 22 offers Dr. Browning's celebrated cholera and diarrhea remedy. This, the ad shares, is, quote, a sovereign and never failing remedy for all bowel affections. Cholera, dysentery, diarrhea, cholera morbus, flatulent colic, inflammation of the bowels, weakness of stomach and bowels. In giving publicity to the above medicine, we know that we are furnishing the community with a truly reliable article, surpassing anything of the kind in use. It is a remedy perfectly safe, speedy, and effectual, possessing as it does intrinsic worth. We expect it to win for itself an appreciation and notoriety of which we may justly feel proud. The worst forms of diarrhea, dysentery, and cholera morbus can be speedily cured by Dr. Browning's remedy. It is an entirely vegetable preparation, mild and soothing in its effects. The proprietors do not claim for it a reputation to cure all the diseases to which the human race is subject, but only such diseases as are dependent on the state of the bowels. At least they tried to do a little bit of honesty in that one. Didn't cure everything, just everything related to, you know, a bottle cost only 50 cents. Now, moving on, page 28 offers Texans something new. Now, this is a good one. This is something new. Dr. Perez's Draggies of Santonine, or Worm Specific. This is a curious one. Quote, a palatable and efficacious remedy for worms. Remember, this is back in the mid-19th century, 1860s. And apparently, worms were a bad problem. And the ad states that parents find great difficulty in giving the vermifuges of the present day from the fact that they are extremely repugnant to the taste of children. Compounded as they are chiefly from castor oil and oil worm seed and calomel. And often after the difficulty of its administration has been overcome, the dose is discharged from the stomach by vomiting and all the trouble and inconvenience has again to be gone through with Doubtless again to be renewed. This discovery of Dr. Perez completely removes these serious objections, giving you in the form and appearance of sugar drops a safer and more reliable preparation. Santonine enjoys a reputation superior to all other remedies known to the medical world as the most effectual agent for the expulsion of worms. Dr. Perez has finally been enabled to present to the careful consideration of mothers in this country this invaluable medicine in an exceedingly attractive form. Children readily take them from the fact that they are entirely pleasant to the taste and in no way disagreeable. The inventor of these draggies informs us that he was surprised to observe so many nauseating preparations for worms exposed for sale in this country, whereas in Spain, the only preparation used was santonine in this attractive and agreeable form. Parents can rely upon the simplicity and safety of this article and at the same time be assured of its superior efficacy. Be sure and ask for Dr. Perez's Dragies. And this cure was available for only 25 cents. Now, the next one was one that I was curious about. It's page 26 of the Almanac offers diggers specific or dirt eaters cure. I had not heard of this and I put a statement out about, hey, are you familiar with this on social media? And apparently it's something that has lasted into the 20th century. Yeah. People come forward and say, yeah, my sister had this or my mother did this and apparently and i'm not an expert you must think that it has to do with a need for nutrition or nutrients that the soil might provide something i'm gonna look into to find out a little bit more about so here we go this is 
Diggers Specific or Dirt Eaters Cure. A certain and infallible cure for this most pernicious habit is now offered to the public in the above remedy. Now, the ad was targeted towards parents for their children and to planters for their slave laborers. And the ad assured Texans that if your child was addicted to this habit, quote, they may rely on a speedy and permanent cure by using the digger specific according to directions. The evil effects of dirt eating on the system are too well known to everyone who has witnessed a case of it to need any comment. It is often practiced secretly for years while the parent owner or physician are totally unable to account for the loss of health and general debility in the subject. The following are some indications of the presence of the habit, and when observed should be promptly met with the cure. Bowels and stomach much distended, a constant sense of fullness, great appetite, with very little capacity for eating, a total absence of color in the skin, face especially has a bloated and colorless look, eyes dull, the whites being of a muddy color, and no brilliancy in the pupil. The ad then subjoined a few statements from a number of certificates in their possession. And so we've got some personal testimonials. You know how advertising does that today? Well, they had personal testimonials in this Texas Almanac ad. And the first is from G.B. Burr of Burr's Ferry, Sabine Parish, Louisiana who wrote on January 14th, 1859 to E.B. Wheelock and Company, New Orleans, the following. Gentlemen, I have during the past year been recommending an article of medicine prepared by you, styled Diggers Specific or Dirt Eaters Cure, and in some 30 cases in which it has been used, I have not known it to fail in a single instance to effect a permanent cure. I have been selling patent medicines for the last 30 years and have never given a certificate before, nor would I now had I ever heard of a case of dirt eater being cured by regular physicians. And I firmly believe the diggers specific will cure in every instant when given according to directions. I have also found it a most efficacious remedy for the permanent cure of fever and ague and all cases of general debility. That was quite some uh, endorsement. Now, Wilson H. Mitchell, also residing on uh, the Sabine River in the parish of Sabine, state of Louisiana, he certified that, quote, my son Christopher, now about 15 years old, contracted when a small child, the habit of eating dirt and no persuasions, threats, or any inducements that I could offer would cause him to refrain. His health and constitution appeared to be ruined, and it was not expected by my neighbors or myself that he could live more than a few weeks. In fact, I lost all hopes. My friend and neighbor, Mr. G.B. Burr, seeing him and as a last experiment, proposed to take him home with him and try the digger specific. He did so, and in a very short time, he commenced improving, and in two months, he became restored to health and is at this time a healthy and robust boy, not having the slightest inclination to resume his former habit. His wonderful recovery induced me to procure a bottle of the medicine for a little daughter of mine who had injured her health by the same cause, but not to the extent of my son. And in a very short time, she entirely recovered, have known many cases, both among whites and blacks, that have been cured of dirt eating by this medicine. And in no instance have I heard of a failure. 
And then there's another from John McGee of Anico, Sabine Parish. I wonder if he was a friend of Dr. Burr's. But we'll go on. For this cure, what would it cost you, do you think? They've been some medicines available for 25 cents, a dollar, 50 cents. This cure sets you back $5 a bottle. Moving on, I've got a couple more here for you. On page 30, there was an ad for the Electric Febrifuge Speeds Fever Tonic. Quote, warranted to cure in from 2 to 20 hours without the use of quinine, fever, and ague, all bilious, yellow, congestive, and typhoid fevers, and all febrile diseases. This invaluable medicine has been before the public for the last 10 years, and wherever it has been used has proved a certain cure for all types and grades of fever and has not failed to cure in a single instance when taken according to directions. Time and experience have also proved satisfactorily that the electrical febrifuge cures smallpox, scarlet fever, measles, erysipelas, nervous and bilious headache, neuralgia, nervous toothache, fits, spathoms, cramps in the stomach, want of rest, delirium tremens, lockjaw, earache or ringing in the ears, cold feet and hands, influenza and bad colds. There is no medicine either simple or compound, equal to the electrical febrifuge for the relief of many difficulties of females. From 15 to 30 drops taken every alternate night for a month previous to confinement will prevent almost all the difficulties attending childbirth. And taken during labor, according to directions, will render the pains of labor both light and of short duration. A dose of 15 or 20 drops once or twice a day will prevent swelled breasts or any of the usual difficulties such as childbed fever, etc. I guess it's better than putting an axe under the bed. Um, and they end with saying the truth of the above can only be realized by giving it a trial. One bottle, price one dollar, contains enough to cure from four to six cases of ordinary fever, which renders it the cheapest medicine in the world without regard to the great saving of time and suffering. Beware of counterfeits or mixtures purporting to be the same or similar to the genuine article. They are dangerous and unsafe for use. None genuine without the likeness, authority, and signature of James Speed on the envelope and the words. And in closing, I'm going to share this last one. Um, it's an ad from W. Henry Elliott. Now, W. Henry Elliott was in Houston, Texas, and had a wholesale and retail business and advertised as the sole proprietor of Elliott's celebrated family medicines. Now, what were some of these? He offered the hygienic panacea, a substitute for calomel being entirely a vegetable preparation. We see a trend here, lots of vegetables, good, good super greens and stuff for you here and certain cure for bilious fever, liver complaint, constipation of the bowels, nervous headache, etc. Price $1 a bottle. Elliot's Texas anti-bilious pills superior to any cathartic pills now in use. Of course, everything's better in Texas, right? And you couldn't beat the price, 25 cents a box. Elliot's celebrated cough mixture, the most valuable medicine for coughs and pneumonia, 25 and 50 cents a bottle. Elliot's diarrhea mixture, this medicine is unequal as a remedy for diarrhea, colic, cholera morbus, etc. And it was a deal at only 25 cents a bottle. And then there's Dr. Roberts. Fever pills warranted to cure fever and ague and all other fevers. Price 75 cents a bottle. And then there's Elliot's Texas Vermifuge, a safe 
and certain remedy for worms in children. Price, 25 cents a bottle. He was also a dealer in rum, brandy, and wines, of course, for medicinal uses only. Little wink there, maybe. And he was also proud to be the manufacturer of celebrated Rohrbach Toilet and Family Soap for Harris County. So, there you have it. More than you or I ever expected possibly to know about mid-19th century medicinal cures and um, their claims. Uh, kind of makes me want to look into a little bit more and see if I could track down the actual histories of some of these people and if they were even real people. I'm sure some of them were. Um, but let's take a quick break and then we'll close out the episode. I don't know about you, but you know, I know that there are issues with the medical industry and healthcare uh, for a variety of things in, in our country today. And I, you know, I know that some people might have some legitimate worries and concerns over different medical treatments, but I'm happy not to have to rely on the things that we used to have to rely on, especially bloodletting. Some of these uh, medicines and cures that were offered, um, maybe they did work. I don't know. Um, it sounds kind of scary that either the the cause usually was always solved by either by inducing people to get sick in one way or another to clean out the system. So that's going to do it. I've got a lot of stuff in the works, and this was just a pleasant thing i came across well not necessarily that pleasant i know sorry about some of the content it's just interesting to me how um you know it really wasn't that long ago you know 1860 um you know really wasn't that far that shows how far we've really come and you know i appreciate our medical establishment that we have now and the life-saving methods and techniques that we benefit from today compared to just back during that time so let's end the show let's say thanks to Derek McLennan as usual for the theme music thanks to everybody that helps out on Patreon and, or by just clicking on the in the show notes on the buy me a cup of coffee link be sure to remember to check out Wild West Extravaganza podcast listen to Texas River Tonk go check out Galveston Unscripted if you haven't already Hopefully, I'll be making an appearance there, and we'll be having a special guest on Texas History Lessons in there by future, if our schedules and just the daily requirements that we face will allow us to finish uh, the projects we're working on. I've got a lot of Lessons episodes in the works. It's all coming close to where I can just get them released, and, you know, like a couple of special surprises coming up. So thank you for listening. I'm sorry that some of that might not have been that pleasant to listen to, but I just found it curious and wanted to share it. And there's a lot more like that I've been coming across. I've got some extra bonus stuff that for a shorter episode, just to show you some, some interesting things that you come across when you're just digging through a bunch of older um, media. I'd also like to thank my cousin Dave for loaning me some gear for recording, uh, testing it out and see how it, if it makes a difference. Hopefully it does. So special thanks to him. He's a, been a great cousin and good friend from his entire life and most of mine. Figure that one out. Uh, before we go, I want to introduce a new Texas History Lesson Spotlight artist, J.R. Tully and the Dreamland Band. At the time of this recording, he just recently released a new song, she shouldn't have to leave Texas that I think you should go check out everywhere you listen to music. And, uh, you know, he's got some great songs, so be sure to keep an eye on him. And we're going to close out by one of the songs I really liked. It's called Country Standards. So thanks to JR for letting me share his songs. And, yeah, that's going to do it. Again, thank you for listening. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Be kind. Adios. Sort of happened all at once Like a summer setting sun I blinked and found myself Twilight blue Gotta stay awake to talk 
Cause you said that you would call The only person who could calm my nerves is you So I'll sing country standards While waiting on the answers To the questions and have questions in my mind Do I want Conway or Tammy Or the whole Hank Williams family To be the last song I sang before you said goodbye So I guess that I am free To do just what I please But when did I choose to want the things I do? Wash the dishes in the sink Or have another drink Or to commit my angry heart to loving you So I'll sing country standards While waiting on the answers To the questions and have questions in my mind Do I want Emmy Lou or Johnny Or both John Pine and Bonnie The harmony will fade away in time Sitting in the dark Just covered in the dusk of everything And I almost don't believe it Cause I hate it and I need it I hold my breath when I hear the phone ring And you said, sing your country standards If you call then I won't answer Get my number, name, and favorite songs Put on your country albums Cause you can't feel without them I was just another lyric all along So I'll sing country standards Try to live without her Lose myself and other women all alone And I hope that she can hear me I try to sing out clearly Last song before she tells me to come home 